One of the greatest debates in SEO is whether or not the Google Sandbox exists, whether or not new sites have a cap on them that prevents them from getting much traffic in Google. Now, Google officially denies that the Sandbox exists, but evidence from countless other bloggers, including some of my own projects, says otherwise. So in this video, let's go over whether or not the Sandbox is real and how you can start getting more traffic more quickly. Now, just for a bit of context, my name is James McAllister, and I've been building websites online for over 11 years now. I have several thousand blogging students, many of which have been fortunate enough to share their results with me. And I've gotten to see a lot of sites move out of what many people call the sandbox period. Now, again, just to define it, this is a period from one to eight months or so after launching a new site in which Google just seems to artificially suppress the site and refuse to send much traffic to it. I think it can be helpful to think about things from sort of Google's perspective for just a moment. Now, Google denies that the sandbox period exists, but it doesn't make sense from their perspective if we're being honest. New sites pop up all the time, and a lot of them don't have good intentions. Especially with the rise of AI tools, we've also seen new spam sites pop up that just crank out tens of thousands of pages out of nowhere. It's easier than ever to take up a lot of real estate on the SERPs without much work. This poses the problem. Google's job is to deliver reliable and trustworthy results for searchers, as well as keep them safe. If a new site could pop up and start getting large volumes of traffic quickly, Google would not be able to play whack-a-mole fast enough to take all these down. Introducing a waiting period, however, where Google can actually monitor and analyze the sites and their content, and this issue isn't as prominent. So if Google did have a sandbox, I would certainly understand why this is the case. And this is why I personally believe that the sandbox is real. However, there are a few factors that I think determines its strength and length of time, and by keeping these in mind, you can get out of it faster. The first is that it's likely niche dependent. Google uses a signal called EEAT, or Experience, Expertise, Authority, and Trust, to determine a website's credibility. They want to know that you know what you're talking about, and you're somebody that's actually qualified to write about this topic. The thing is, some niches require this more than others. For example, you obviously don't just want anyone giving out health or investment advice, but maybe the qualifications of a writer aren't as important if you're writing about, let's say, a video game. In other words, the consequences of Google sending people to bad advice matter more for some topics than others. So, Google is more selective with certain types of traffic. Therefore, if you're in what's called a your money or your life niche, it's very likely that the sandbox period you'll experience will be much longer. Or maybe it's just that the content would take longer to rank anyway, even without a sandbox. So that brings me to my next point. A lot of the time, people believe that they're still in the Google sandbox when really they actually might not be. Articles take a significant amount of time to rank, and this is true even for established websites. Even some of my coaching clients that have sites in the DR 50s and 60s may need to wait between four and six months to know how an article is going to end up performing. And for my sites, I notice that in months one or two, I often have more traffic from Bing than I do from Google. It's not until month three or so where things really start picking up a bit. Therefore, what you're believing to be the sandbox period may just be your articles actually finally, you know, aging in. And there may not really be anything wrong. It just feels that way because you don't have any content that's a full six months old yet. So, how do you get out of the Google Sandbox? Well, there are a few things you can do. First off, anything you could do to give Google trust signals is going to be a very good thing. Again, especially for websites that require EEAT. A lot of these things you can create yourself. There are a lot of great things you can do to help with this. For example, like say, um, writing detailed author bios, making sure your contact information is prominent on the page, using real images you've taken yourself, and so on. I'll include a link to some on-page SEO training in the description if you want to learn more about that. Next, try to start building some external trust signals from other people. Now, the big one obviously is backlinks, but you can do a lot more than that. For example, sending people to your pages from other sources so Google can begin to start collecting engagement data, things like time on page, bounce rate, how they interact with their website, and so on. These aren't huge signals, but early on, Google doesn't really have much to go with, so they may rely on these more heavily. Finally, try writing articles about topics with extremely low competition, like there aren't even five relevant pages to show if Google wanted to. These keywords may show a zero search volume in tools like Ahrefs or SEMrush, but they still get searched. And again, it's all about getting some data to show Google that you're a real site so it can start ranking you for more competitive terms. If you'd like to learn the exact content strategy I use that can help you start making money even with a very small audience, sign up for my free workshop at jamesmcallisteronline.com forward slash workshop. It's a lot different than the strategy I used to use in the past, which was basically just finding low competition keywords and writing as many articles as I could. I personally believe those days are over and the strategy I use in teaching this workshop is a lot more sustainable and profitable in the long run. Surprisingly, a lot less work is involved too. Anyway, I hope your site gets out of the sandbox soon. 
please feel free to share your sandbox experience in the comments below, and I hope to see you in a future video.